we are waiting just one or two couple of minute to like let the people in i suppose like many people are still joining okay so uh, thank you everyone for making yourself available for today's webinar uh, my name is sekhar singh and i work with agile minia as a digital marketing manager i'm glad to host this event in absence of preet actually preet is quite busy today with client engagements those who don't know about preet the man behind idea about the safe thursday initiative was the uh, preet we have started this program on may uh, 28th the first program we have launched on the may 28th and the main motive behind this initiative is to provide the platform for the practitioners to learn and share the knowledge there will be series of webinar we have host like uh, lean coffee tables virtual meetups and we organize this events on every thursday 2 pm ist timing so today our topic is thinking about design thinking things no further uh, the speaker of this event will be pramila just a little heads up about the like this event before we get started if you have any queries and questions during the presentations i would uh, i would uh, request you to like bring them up in the presentations you just write down this your questions answer uh, questions and we will take them up during after presentation uh, without any delay further i would turn this time to promila who is uh, today's our speaker who is also a good friend of preet and she is a certified design thinking practitioner and spc uh, who is going to help us understand and experience the nuances of the design thinking and how it can cause accelerated progress and culture transformations in organizations so i uh, just uh, i will hand over this events to pramila it's over to you pramila thank you thank you for making your time for this event thank you sheka and uh, good afternoon folks uh, so nice good crowd and hopefully some people are joining in still okay uh, so sheka i am the host now ah yeah i i make yes now you are the host thank you yeah okay so let me just bring in my presentation uh but so uh, i'm getting notifications to admit people you will be able to handle that check yeah up? yeah i I'll, i'll take care of it okay and you see the presentation yes fine so good afternoon guys uh not a very nice time <laughs> to you know do a session just after lunch i don't know some of you would have just finished your lunch and come into this session but i would like to thank each and every one of you to come in here and uh, you know uh, listen to me and let's see how uh, this session goes about and what we are able to take out of this uh, session right so um what basically i want to cover is uh, design thinking yeah but we would have heard a lot about design thinking would have read a lot about design thinking we have numerous case studies we have numerous ted talks uh, related to design thinking but what i thought today was to just give you a brief about what this concept is and then also to make it visual for you because there's a great saying which goes uh, that is design thinking made visual right so it's it's all about visual so today i'm going going to first touch upon some concepts and after that let's see how we can uh, you know uh, do design thinking in our teams and how the visual aspect of that can be remained all the time okay so what is this so what's this okay 
moving on so um, you have a link do you all see this link can you just ping it on chat Yes, people are commenting. Yes, they have. Okay, fine. Uh, so yeah, so go ahead and uh, you go ahead to this uh, menti.com and enter the code there. So uh, I hope you have gone. Let me see how many members are there in menti.com. Mm, nice, I already see people have started filling in. Okay. Anybody want some more time or we'll move on? We'll go to the next one. Okay. Yeah, so next question. So we've written about the expectation from the course and then is what comes to your mind when you think of design thinking? Okay, I see that everybody has put in their answers. Do we have any more people who wants to put in? Okay. So yeah, the first and foremost, which I see is yes, obviously I understand about design thinking, how design thinking is applied in the agile world, how does it, uh, design thinking can be used at team level, design thinking, understanding and implementation, understand how design thinking is different from any other design. It's a new approach, understand the strength of design thinking to get a quick crisp of design thinking, okay. Revisit design thinking, oh, some of you already know about it. That's great. When and how to apply design thinking in the teams. So high level knowledge of design thinking. Makes my life easy. Okay, fine. Understand how to apply design thinking uh, for daily work, techniques which I can apply in day-to-day -day life to get some more information about design thinking. So yes, wonderful. This is great. This is a great beginning actually. So I see that I have a very good audience wherein many of you already have a flavor of design thinking and many of you want to know a lot of things. So as I already stated in my intro talk that I'm going to do some, some tools which we can, uh, uh, you know, uh, which will be like a takeaway from this session, which we can actually utilize and see how we can apply in our work and how we can start thinking about design thinking. Okay. <clears throat> so, and then. Wonderful. So what comes to your mind when you think of design thinking? So yeah, the highlight is UX, visual, innovation, uh, user-centered, user experience, communication, attention to detail, doing things different. So why you guys are here, you already know everything. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so glad you've already captured all the key words, which, you know, we are going to uh, look at today in the session, somewhere I saw empathy. Okay, so yeah, great beginnings. So great make, beginnings make great endings, right? So let's get back to where I was. So we'll close this. Okay. So 
Shekhar, I'm getting these uh, notifications to admit people all the time. Okay. Are you co-host? Yeah, I'm not co-host. Lohit is there. Lohit is there too. Uh, will you please okay. make me the co-host as well? Okay. Yeah. Now I can manage. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And for some reason, my presentation is coming all white. <laughs> it was all black. Anyways, let's focus on the content. Presentation, you know, look and feel. That's what we are going to learn. That, you know, design is not all about look and feel, right? So yes, before we start about design thinking, I wanted to little bit stress on thinking. What do you mean by thinking? You know, how we have gotten here. We all think, right? We, we, you'll be like surprised that why you want to touch on such a word called thinking because it's, it's basic. We, we all do this activity, but you know what? We also have a brief history of thinking, how we have come from, you know, our cognitive way of thinking. Like, you know, you must be taking a lot of, uh, you know, if at all, uh, some sessions or trainings on cognitive bias. These days, it's very, very, uh, you know, big topic critical thinking, uh, topics like, uh, you know, uh, unconscious mind, you know, these are all coming into play. But how we have grown uh, from a person, you know, how the evaluation has happened. So, uh, you know, there was time when his spiritual awakening started to happen. There was a lot of uh, curiosity in the world, right? And we started to moving towards technology, you know. We started to gather a lot of knowledge through processes and systems. And currently now we are in an age which is actually where we have a lot of knowledge and we've moved into a machine age. We're talking about driverless cars. We, our kids are already talking about cars which can fly over the traffic, right? So we have this ample, if you see the graph here, if you see you know, the, the knowledge paradox and the intelligence, it's, it's huge. But how we are tapping it, that's, that's really important. So you know how we have gotten here? We have, from philosophy, to uh, knowledge, to technology, and now to thinking about, you know, artificial in intelligence. We've come a long way when we talk about uh, thinking, right? So that's one part of it. Design, design. What do you, what do you guys think when I say design? What what comes to your mind? You, would you want to write in chat, chat window? Okay, high level framework, creativity, any other user, user view, approach to solving a problem, something attractive, flexible, yeah. So yeah, Ashish, I, I love that, you know, approach to solving a problem. So one thing I'm glad is that we, when we say design, we all understand this is, it's a process. It's, it's not the end product. Like suppose I go to a museum, I see a, a, you know, a piece of architecture over there, kept over there and I'm like, okay, what a design. That too is a design, but that's an end product of a design. Design is all that discussions, all that brainstorming, all that yelling, which goes into make that design. Yes, it can be, yeah, as somebody is saying that like it's a visual representation of what customer wants. It, yeah. That's the end product, but we are doing design to get to it, okay? And when we bring design and thinking together, what we are saying is this, this whole process where we are doing our talking, we are thinking, but we are making something. So we are actually tying our thinking to making, right? So that's, that's how we are saying, yes, we give some structure to our thinking. Inference and hypothesis, very good. You know, all these actually are some form of design. So that makes me comfortable that at least now we understand, you know, what a design thinking is really about. So it's not about, you know, if I go further, okay. 
uh, yeah, so we'll get to the definition. But what I was saying was we would have seen a lot of things in internet as soon as we open design thinking, but the core of which is what we already understand that it's a design and what we are trying to actually bring into a visual form, right? By, by you know, what thoughts are there, we are just putting it outside in the world. So just going by the definition of what Tim Brown, the president and CEO of IDEO, you know, you all must have heard about him if you are here today, or if not, go and hear some of his TED Talks, and he's given some great examples of uh, how they tackle design thinking, and they've done some great projects in India and elsewhere, where how they have tackled really small things, right? Uh, so design thinking is human-centered somebody had already brought that word that's why i wanted it from you guys that yes you already know some of the concepts right so it's a human centered approach it involves innovation right uh, it actually addresses needs of people and the possibilities of technology what is feasible by what technology we have that also comes into picture and in, in eventually it leads us to business success so uh, just let me break it down into smaller chunks because yeah there's a lot of big words and there are a lot, lot many sentences so when i say design thinking what we have to think about is start small you know, it's not always that you need to have very big examples. In fact, when we are working, how uh, many of you would be working in a agile atmosphere. So we always talk about, you know, keeping our stories small, right? We have big epics, right? So why small? Because when we talk about organizations, so organizations are big. They talk about big things. They have big initiatives, right? But here we are saying human-centered needs of people. Right. So we cannot address uh, needs of people in a big bang. I cannot just say, OK, you know what? Uh, I I need a car which can go or fly over traffic. Right. This is a big need. But there can be a small need wherein uh, I can just say, OK, like how now things have come into picture wherein um, we have uh, Google, Google Maps. OK. I know the use case is not currently valid because we are mostly staying at home, but yeah, Google Maps kind of gives us that idea of how long it's going to take, which route to take, how to avoid traffic. So one of the need is met, right? So it's a small, a way, a small chunk of a bigger problem, which I was trying to tell you. Another example, if we have to look at is um, like sometimes you know, especially in healthcare, there's a lot of talk about design thinking, not only in healthcare, in education, in, um, you know, security, in IT, but let's take example of healthcare. So this is one of my very, very uh, dear examples because recently I had got it as a forward also from uh, some of my friends. So it shows, uh, you know, it uh, shows a roof of a hospital, okay, and it's like in that video, there's nothing. There's just roof of the hospital, okay? Uh, and that goes on for five to seven minutes, okay? When you watch that video, you'll be like, what's this? You know, I'm just like, you know, the, you see like, uh, not the walls, actually the roof, the, you know, the square squares of the roof, you see that and you'll be like, what is this? You know, what, is, what was that video? In the end, it says, this is the life of a patient in the hospital, lying on the hospital bed. And that's so, so correct. That is, that's how a patient feels in the hospital. What they do if they're lying down on the bed, they just see and stare at the wall, right? So human-centered example it is. But now when healthcare companies say, oh, we want to make the, you know, the experience of a patient um, awesome when they come to the hospital or when they come to clinic or they, when they go to um, you know a, a center any medical center they, their experience has to be awesome do you ever think they would even try to relate to this scenario where i told that the patient is actually only staring at the roof right so what they try to do the organizations they think big they start to have a nice reception. You know, the, as soon as you go, you will have people who will come and tell you about different plans they have, whether insurance plans or now, nowadays I'm hearing COVID plans are there, non-COVID plans are there. So you'll hear a lot. And then you'll, uh, you'll be greeted by, you know, personal nurse, your room will be in such a way, all that. But what does a patient want, right? 
he wants to recover fast and also when he is into that misery at that time if there has to be some color in his life so having said that right are you able to think of any such idea which you can propose to make this patient's uh, misery a little bit less can, can you think of something it can be anything let's let's just throw some ideas and let's see where it goes before i move on Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, making him believe he's at right hands. Yes. Uh, flower painting on the wall. Ask patient what he would like to see or hear. Very nice. So, yeah, let's go with these. So, the idea of making flower paintings on the wall. Wonderful. You know, because why I picked up that first? Because that's the smallest. You know, that's the small thing you can do. Uh, you know, um, if it's the wall has some... The, you know smiley face whenever the patient opens and sees that so it's just the smallest thing that's why i picked it can be anything right making him believe he's in right hand so that's yeah if they have good set of doctors and that they kind of do but yes that assurance somebody to talk to yeah but that will require a little more uh, you know um, human uh, and also a lot of resources so yeah great planning is required there it's a good example little bigger ask patient what he would like to hear yes somebody can be there with them when they want to talk to them or something which is kind of related to the first one so yes so when we talk about design we talk about small and then we make it big okay so let's move on Okay, so now that now we've understood design thinking, basic principle like okay, how to tackle design thinking. What what does it mean to a layman? You know, there are big things available on internet, right? Uh, there are a um, lot of frameworks which were available. I think the first one being you know the five step process, and then came the loop method, and then uh, making the five step process also an ongoing, right? So yes, there are wonderful models we can pick. Whatever has been, excuse me, what has been already, you know, applied. Pick that up and apply. Uh, use it as it is. Or if we understand design thinking, the core of design thinking, we can approach it and however we want. But yes, whatever you do, iteration is the key. So you cannot stop at one place you have to get better as the three examples i i told you just now right which i picked from you audience so the first step was just to have a painting on the wall right uh, second step can be um, you know um, family members could have sent some cards or something which can be placed uh, in, in with the patient right making him having more personal experience right so you have to keep on improving and that's that's the uh, whole thing about design you know so you have to keep on improving you have to uh, keep on doing incremental um, uh, betterment right so let's move on further so yeah i talked about many designs so so if if i look at this right this is also one of the thing which is uh, very cool which i found on the internet that uh, it says that i'm giving a talk on how our company embraces design thinking since you are a designer can you design my slides make sure to use comic sense right so now whatever till now whatever i have covered it's very clear that design thinking is not for designers initially yes right so somebody had brought up the word ux ui ux right so it's not only for designers but what corporations are doing they are bringing in designers they are giving them hefty amount and they say okay fine design this product for me but uh, do they really know what are the user needs right we talked about needs of the people do they really know because it's the product owner or the product manager who goes and talks to the business or talk to the users it's not the designers in some organizations 
organization de designers do go and talk but then still there are silos so so what i am trying to highlight here is i think you know this comical slide tells us that it's for everybody every single person who is going to use the product who is going to make the product who is going to you know test the product everybody has to be involved in design because i said it is an iterative process okay so let's move on yeah so a lot happening on this slide but uh, what first i'll start with the uh, gaiko right gaiko i don't know how many of you are aware gaiko is a insurance company car insurance company in the us i think it take us take us to other uh, segments also so uh, they have a beautiful slogan i've written it over here 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance right this particular slogan is highly famous in uh, united states you know every single person uh, who have obviously they all own the car but they resonate with this slogan even if they don't have like cuz uh, uh, insurance they do know this slogan so what's so important or what's so catchy in this so it says that 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance so what it is doing is it is bringing the whole organization together to this one goal what is that goal that a user will take just 15 minutes to fill that form and he will get some benefit and what is that benefit the benefit is that he is going to get 15% more savings compared to their competitors so this particular slogan actually brings the user in it they are also bringing the organization and who are there in the organization so the one who is actually making the form the one who is into the um, sales and marketing trying to know what the competitors are doing the one who is testing this whole application so everybody everybody is aligned through this one goal and they all have some or the other contribution to give to this particular slogan okay so now that we've understood right what is that user centric meaning right user centric so yes something user centric goal which brings value proposition to everybody right organizations or corporates they want value proposition in that they should be able to sell their products but what they should be sell uh, selling that whatever the customers are actually requiring okay so then i come to the three main um, lovely uh, you know i would say terms which actually i kind of resonate to whenever i think of design thinking and uh, i've also had a lot of workshops at uh, you know my uh, company and also at some places where i'm consulting so we always talk about these three things right one is that it is always important to understand what is that market based user outcomes what is that we are trying to do what is that goal and that has to come from user you should not go and you know derive it for them it should be users who's be who are in when they are with you they are deri deriving it okay so we should not focus on can we build the thing right we should focus on can we serve the user if we change our mindset to this that okay i am going to keep in my needs of the people i am going to serve them we'll always make the right thing right next is storytelling so whatever we are understanding right we'll get into how we are actually doing the storytelling but what i i'm saying is when we are trying to understand this uh, user needs we should be able to tell what is that story we should be able to showcase that story what are we trying to address with that particular uh, goal you know what is that we are doing in this case we were trying to save 15% for our users next is potential users so you which you have heard everywhere right i have been talking about users people uh, end users potential users sponsor users you you call it they are they are the people who are who are part of uh, our our whole process design thinking process they observe and they reflect to create with us they are not separate they are not sitting somewhere yeah you know we are not creating something for our product manager who is going to then go and sell to the outside world okay so Uh, so there's one person waiting. We can just admit him. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. So just in continuation with what I was talking in the previous slide. So we are not, you know, we don't make people want things. Okay. We'll not make things and then have them to buy those things. That's how it is happening currently. Always, you know, currently what is happening is we come up with the product because we think there is a problem and then, okay, fine. This is a, a, a product which is going to do certain things. But the focus should now go from making things that people really want. What is that they want? For example, I would like to ask a question. Just think in your mind. When you're trying to make a Skype call to your uh, you know, loved one, uh, family member and all. So what's your end goal, right? End goal is to have a connect, to know how they are feeling. Your goal is not to, you know, no Skype call or to be able to open Skype and do a call. Your end goal is something else, right? So this is this is what I'm mentioning when I'm saying that making things that people really want. So first of all, we need to understand that. How do we understand that? That what, what is that people really want? Because we are nowadays we are always focusing on we make things and we oh, hopefully our customers buy them. Hopefully this product is a hit, you know. Hopefully we do better than our competitors. This is how we think. But if we have touched to our users, then we will not have such questions in mind. So when we talk about that, very three key important factors come into picture are empathy, experiments, and explorations. Empathy, right? We would have heard a lot. I heard this word come up in the beginning also, right? It's uh, I here we are saying heart, right? I've put a heart here. Okay, you know we have that humanly touch, human connection, and all that. But it's more than more than that, right? It's more than that because we say, okay, I feel for you, right? But what do, what does that mean? We really feel. We really feel our uh, end users. We know their problems. Right. So that's what we have to run experiments. We have to do some explorations. We need to know more about our users. We need to uh, be able to define our users. We, we need to be able to uh, question why they are first of all here. You know, what are they feeling? You know, what are those those pain points? So we have to explore all that and we need to have empathy. You know, we do whatever we do, you know, and uh, run experiments to get to the real wants of people. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So what happens is generally, it's always like currently, you know, we should not be in a situation where we say, okay, fine, I have this solution and now let me go and find a problem which go will go along with it, right? Yeah, this is like putting too harshly, but yeah, generally that happens, right? We. Uh, we see, okay, competitor is moving in this direction. Let's do something that way and then hope that it clicks. <laughs> so let's get into a little bit of structure around, you know, what do we actually do in design thinking? I have told you, like I've come, I've kind of come to design thinking technique on more of a, you know, non-structured approach because it is a little bit non-structured structured approach but here I'm kind of should, trying to show you some structure because yes we kind of go into these steps you know these steps help us a lot to break it down further and then get some outcomes because the idea is to get those markets uh, you know market based real outcomes or goals okay we'll see this in detail I just wanted to kind of you know bring some structure because I've been uh, talking of various things okay so Again, these are the four pillars when we run some kind of a design thinking uh, in our mind, with our teams, we're talking about it somewhere. We Even when you're at home, these days when you're at home, something is not working, how you will bring design thinking into a picture, right? Suppose your kid comes and tells you, hey, this is not working, mama, can you please uh, fix it? And you don't have the right tools because you know some of the things you, you can't go and buy, maybe because of lockdown or maybe those shops are not operational, then how will you come in uh, your, your kids uh, shoes and see how, what is the impact and then how will you go and fix it you know so this this you need to have a lot of empathy in that right so um, 
I think before we move on, I think let's let me just quickly show you a small uh, video about empathy to make sure we always keep saying, OK, come into our shoes. But then what do we need to uh, do if we have to come into someone's shoes? We have to first remove our shoes literally and then get into their shoes to understand. Right. So we mostly we are very sympathetic. You know, we are always like, OK, you know, I can extend that uh, help helping hand. But empathy is a little bit different. So if I can come out. Yes, you can see, right? Yeah, yeah, we can see. Yeah, we can see. OK, so I'm going to play this uh, video. It is Brené Brown on empathy. There is no sound in this video. No sound? OK. Not coming. One sec. Yeah, sound is not coming. One second. How about now? It is coming, but it is very low. Yeah. OK. Okay, let's first see the video and I'll share the link uh, with you all. Okay, I'm audible. Yes. Okay, so yeah, there was not, not much to hear. It was mostly to see, right? So did you see how, you know, the third person was like, okay, I feel how you're feeling when he was down under that uh, hole, you know, uh, and he offered a sandwich. That was sympathy, you know, he's trying to cheer him up and say, hey, I know how you feel. But when, you know, this other person came up with empathy, he tried to inculcate the same feelings in him. And then he said, I'm glad you at least shared with me because I really don't know what you feel. I'm just trying to replicate it, but I don't know. I need to spend more time with you. And that's when he came down in that black hole with this person and tried to, 
you know inculcate the same feelings so that's empathy getting into their shoes then we need to be very curious when we are you know uh doing a design thinking activity or workshop we need to know why 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 that is happening i don't know i don't know why you feel but i i i just want to be there i want to know those things uh, another very good um, incidents i think i've heard it in one of the trainings uh, very good one so i want to just share it's a short one so there was this uh, beggar he used to be at one corner and he used to always uh, ask passers by about what's the time it is and he used to ask that multiple times in a day so one boy he was like in his teens uh, early uh, late teens he was at the window and always watching this beggar so one day what he decided he uh, you know he collected his pocket money and got a watch basic watch and then he went to this beggar and give this watch to the beggar and said see and now you can see your own time and the beggar says ho oh, he wore it and he said how do i look he said very nice and he said fine then he showed this watch to him and he said hey kid but can you please tell me what is the time so he's like ha huh? so he said because i am blind you know so this boy showed all the sympathy but he did not get to the bigger picture he did not know why he was asking this time every time because it it served two things one is that he was blind so he could not even see time it was uh, otherwise available in multiple places secondly he wanted to have that human connect by talking to people multiple times because he was a lonely man right so that's empathy so you need to be curious you need to ask your mind why something is happening in this way we get really habituated with things uh that's the human mind you know we do something and then we get habituated and that's when we stop thinking uh critically and we stop thinking uh about how something can be done better so please always keep that child alive in yourselves always keep asking questions right because um, you know my 7 year old son he he comes and asks various questions you know he's curious why he's curious because his mind still has not been habituated right why mama there is some fruits have sticker on them some uh, you know uh, some people are not wearing masks all that you know and we just assume it okay they are not very serious so they don't right so we just get habituated when we come out of this is when we will remain curious the second uh, part which i covered thirdly emotional data so why emotional data because you hear both the examples which i told just now had emotional content to it right it was just not okay uh, you know um, a plain numbers or a plain uh, trend and you know we can always tweak numbers and we can influence the data but we cannot influence em emotional data so when we are saying human centric when we are saying user problems emotions has to be there what are they feeling what are they saying what are they experiencing what is that thought process okay and the last one is iterative prototyping right this is this is more to it's the design part right when we are designing something i've touched upon it briefly that we, it doesn't stop there you have to keep on improvising and it has to be quick what prototype does is it helps us make things quickly if it is quick then we are able to show it to the users and we are able to get feedback and then we are able to make changes to it quickly right so we get to the ground root of the problem fine so the ob obvious topic then when we talk about users is something called as persona so i'll not go much into detail of this because now i'm trying to actually get to the you know that whole uh, picture which i showed you on top about uh, here it is you know we kind of do some scope and some uh, you know uh, defining of what users are bringing empathy in picture so yes so we need to first know who are these people right in uh, in the first example where i showed you the empathy video uh, who's that person that fox who who is she you know w what was she trying to do why why she was there why are they trying to do that you know so we have to know that you know and we have to understand whom we are designing for 
and once we have these personas okay uh, how, some of you who are in uh, doing uh, agile delivery they all, always would know what persona is but here basic persona then we build on them we bring empathy to them as of now they were just plain data but we make them into emotional data so when we move on we start to empathize empathize okay what is empathize so if suppose in this picture kevin who's my persona he's a front end developer i know so and so about kevin he's he's a geek he loves to uh, you know he loves to create good uh, designs he uh, wears specs he's uh, lonely you know he does not have a last name and so 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 on and so forth but well i didn't bring in empathy as of now i just created a persona but when i start to relate you know what is he saying so he's saying what's the MP mvp i don't know then he's like how he's feeling today he's feeling lazy he wants to take an off then what he does he's actually co doing coding and templates and he's using git so i need to understand all this and when i bring that into picture is when i am creating empathy maps what is that to identify what opportunities exist in our users current experience we need to map what he does thinks and feels over time and this is this is exactly which you would have actually seen when you come to personas if some of you are business analyst or uh, product owners or product managers you would see you will you were always asking a question so how you, how does your day look like you always ask these questions to your user right so you were always trying to know what systems that user is touching upon but never went into the feelings so when we are doing design thinking we are thinking about how that person is doing thinking and feels over time okay so moving on once we have had these empathy we design their experience right we define them so what we do again as mentioned that we get to how their whole day has been you know what all they do so you know uh, suppose they are trying to go to a destination right so they prepare they plan they uh, travel and then in destination they do something right so what are those things we have kind of classified this is nothing but this can be done as an exercise with your team right where you bring in all the users and you tell them hey this is your workflow so can you please put the workflow steps now can you uh, for that for the plan step for example let's take plan step here what all you do in plan so they will write so many things you know okay i first take an off and after that you know i if i'm not prepared then i uh, chalk, chalk down some list and then i pack all that once they have written all that you know they have written their experience then you ask them okay so which one you think is uh, the doing part which one is that thinking part which is feeling so when they say hey not prepared oh he's feeling not prepared but he's already packed which is doing part right but then when they like okay if i have forgotten something that's thinking part right so put them in that and define their experience which also is known as as a scenario map okay so similarly that kind of you know when we do that exercise let me just go back i touched up forgot to touch upon one thing so when we have this kind of first scenario map in our in front of us what we know is what they are currently doing then we ask questions like so what are the really crucial things to you so they will say for example in plan they will say oh asking for a time time off that's really really important because uh, you know as of now my work is real tight or booking a flight but if they are going by car then booking a flight is not a, a crucial step so like that you ask the users and you can ask them similarly you can ask them for their pain points hey which is the most pain point area as of now to you they say hey, i hate packing that's the pain point for me so Uh, do you see that in scenario map you are able to get to the pain points as well as you are able to get the opportunities and how you are doing that again tying back to the needs the human centered approach they are telling you you didn't tell ask them hey is packing really bad uh, they uh, they have come up with that they felt that and they have told you that hey, i feel anxious when i have to plan something okay so we get to that experience map and it tells a lot about it once we have had that 
you know exploration we have got what is that goal what is that we have to fix you know in fact we can run an exercise where we can say give me the five main points uh, and you get five things from here then you move to ideation you know you ideate you that's where your aha moment comes you're like okay hey uh, so how to solve this problem you know they have uh, you know anxiousness with packing so let's give them an app where they can uh, you know have a checklist of what all things they have packed or something like that just giving you examples so put all the ideas on the board in this exercise when you are doing or you know when you are doing it for yourselves right so put the ideas there and then logically group them to get the 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 most idea which you want to tackle because if you tackle everything then you will not lead anywhere right so you can pick up maybe five ideas one idea however it works okay so and there's some rules when we do this ideation right the, uh, the rules are pretty simple but they are very very critical okay i'll not go into the details of this uh, in the interest of time but yes you know firstly we have to keep in mind that we have to be focused on our users when we give ideas it should not be whatever uh, you know the chunk had come out the five points which had come out it has to be focused on that and nothing is bad so just say just say ideas anything can come out everybody should have a pen or pencil to say as uh, you know say their ideas what is the outcome of that is you will have some really great ideas everybody would have been you know considered everybody was engaged and then you are in a position to prototype uh, and test why prototype as i already mentioned that prototypes are nothing but you can bring your ideas in working immediately okay so in form of 2 b scenarios right it can be some wireframing it can be some sketchings it can be some models uh, right or it can be some lego models so you can ha have prototype and you can see whether it works you know suppose if you look at this uh, uh, spider design by aluminum foil so you will know okay you know should i have you know uh, six legs or eight legs because spider is a uh, eight leg then it's not an insect so all that like it's visible it's there you know the problems with it and then you iterate you test you iterate so that's the highlight of it that everything is a prototype everything even your final finished product is a, a prototype your phone which you are having right now is a prototype because you will get a new one new version next time fine so these are uh, the all the steps which i have covered when you do so this is in in one order i have covered but you know that's the beauty of design thinking that you can go into any order okay but so so does that mean it's a linear process no it's not a linear process because it's a loop it's a loop it's a iterative process you can touch upon anything any time you can fail at one place you can get back to one step so uh, if i go back to the first yes if you look here yeah the center one this is being one of my favorites so you keep observing you keep reflecting you keep 